Welcome back to The Painting Coach, where I show you how to take what's in the box and make it look like what's on the box. And this week, we're painting the brand new plastic Death Core of Krieg miniatures from Kill Team. I'm really excited about this video. I absolutely love the models and can't wait to get stuck in. Now, make sure you watch all the way through to the end because one of my patrons, Tom, suggested that maybe I could show some alternative ways to paint the models. So they all look part of the same squad, but they've got a little bit of a different look to them. So I've gone ahead and done that. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Okay, let's crack on with these plastic Death Core of Krieg miniatures. Great looking kit, uh, really nice. Really hope they get released separately. So we're gonna do a lot of base colors first uh, and then we're gonna kind of come back to highlight because we're gonna use some similar shades. And what I wanna do is I wanna get the trousers and the trench coats based and the color I'm using for that is the Fang. Now you may need two coats, obviously going over a black uh, prime chaos black. Just work your way around, try and do long strokes where you can like that, just for a smoother finish. So I'm going to paint the trousers, I'm going to paint all the trench coat, obviously the arms, the chest, the collar, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll paint the shoes and the, uh, the dark metallics next. Whilst we're waiting for that to dry, we can just take some Rhinox Hide. We're going to use this to just paint the shoes or the boots nice and easy. If you want to paint the strapping as well, you can because it'll make it easier to paint the lighter colour on it uh, later on. So nice and simple, get that done, let it dry and we'll do the silver next. There's a fair few bits of metallics and that are all across the model that will have different finishes and we'll, we'll show you how to do that. Well, I'll show you how to do that, but essentially you want to paint everything that's going to be metallic with some iron hand steel now originally i thought about going for a darker uh, metallic color but actually that'll just it's an extra color to use it's extra steps that you know we're trying to get these on the tabletop to play with so we want to minimize that where we can in some places you know we can't really get away from it too much uh, we do need to use a fair few colors unless you're kind of mix in your own and you're confident doing that so in terms of what i'm painting with the metallic it's like the helmets the shoulder pads obviously the sword part of the pistol uh there's hand protection as well these kind of little bits here so work your way around the models and get that done um this will probably be one of the more time consuming parts because there is so much and then we'll come back uh, and we'll start to add some shades down once we've done all those metallics uh, we want to shade it down, and we're not going to use null oil this time. We're going to use a contrast paint. We're going to use Black Templar contrast paint, and it's mixed with contrast medium, probably half half of each. So one part Black Templar to one part contrast medium, and we want to cover the whole model. Now make sure there's not a huge amount on your brush because we always want to work it around uh, into the recesses. We also want to paint it over all the metallics as well. So everything we've done so far, we'll do the boots as well. Leave the strapping there. Um, because we obviously we're going to paint our lighter later on. So work this onto everything and let that dry. Um, get it into the recesses and then hopefully um, it'll give you a, a kind of a smoother effect than if you use null oil on its own. So get that all done and like i said over everything over all of the metallics and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the the dark metallics of the the helmet and the shoulder pads once we've got everything else done what we want to do is we want to keep using that mixture of contrast medium and uh, black templar and we just want to paint up or continue to paint the shoulders and the helmets and that's going to give us that kind of black metal effect but it also will leave um, those edges a little bit brighter which gives the kind of chipped effect and we'll go in and we'll add more weathering to them later but that's just a, a nice way now I'm probably going to put another coat on once that's dry uh, nice and simple so work your way around get it as dark as you want it 
and then we'll come back and we'll start to we'll start to highlight things. So we're at the point where we're ready to start highlighting things a little bit now. So let's do the cloak or the the overcoats first. So we're going back into that uh, the fang that we've got on the palette. We're looking to highlight most of it, just leaving that darker colour in the recesses. So apologies for the sounds of traffic outside. Seems everybody's going somewhere at the moment. Um, and this is a nice easy part where we're going to bring some of the that blue back. Don't be afraid to you know use a lot of it. You can always go back in and subtly add some black templar later uh, if you want. And we're also going to catch those kind of sharp edges. So we'll get that done and then we'll come back and we'll do the, the boots briefly before we have a look at highlighting that uh, all those silver metallics. The first highlight we'll pop on the cloak is rust grey. Now you may be happy with this on its own, you may not want to put any more on there. I mean I'm going to pop it on, I'm going to kind of make a, a call and we'll see. So you just want to highlight all the most raised edges so you can have a lot of folds in the fabric to catch. So make sure you get all of them. And what you'll start to see is as you catch more and more folds, the kind of the brightness level will start to to dial up a bit. So it's up to you then how much you want to do. But I'm just going for really thin lines, as thin as I can do, well, not as thin as I can do, but as thin as I can film. Where we've got sharp edges to run the brush up, that's great because it makes our life much easier. So work your way around and get that done. And then we'll come back, we'll have a look. We may pop a, a sharp highlight on there. Um, we may not, we'll see. We'll make that call once we know how, how kind of bright we're looking at, at this stage. So what I want to do is just add a, a tiny kind of extreme highlight. We'll probably use this on the, the trousers as well. It's just a little bit of Fenrisian grey, just looking to catch those kind of sharpest, most raised areas where you've got lots of kind of Highlights converging, buttonholes being pulled, just like that, and follow the shape of the model where you can, nice and easy. Again, this is an optional stage, it just adds a little bit of extra punch to some of the highlights. So I was going to do the shoes next, but I think we'll, we'll do the trousers and the cuffs, and then we'll move on to the shoes. To base up the trousers and the cuffs, we use Thunderhawk Blue. Now... While we're doing this, you can see it's just slightly off the colour of the the rest of it. And what's really important is any shade that we've already established through, we want to leave that in those recesses. Because that basically saves us a job of going back in and, and making the adjustments. Now, my Thunderhawk Blue isn't the best in the world at covering, so I might need to put a couple of coats on just to get those sharp creases. Obviously do the cuffs as well. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll look to highlight next. To highlight that first bit, I've mixed the Thunderhawk Blue and Fenrisian Grey about 50-50. And just looking for painting towards those real kind of raised areas in the middle. And when that dries, we'll just give it a second covering. Because that's really thin. Put a bit too much water in. So uh, let that dry and pop it in. And then I think we're good to go on the trousers. Boots highlights really easy. Just go back to that Rhinox hide. And you're just looking to catch those kind of raised areas, leaving the the black in the in the recesses. Nice and simple. We don't want the shoes to pop too much uh, because obviously we're going to have, uh, we won't need them to pop too much rather because we're going to have those kind of lighter bands on them there. So that's that done. Uh, let's jump in and let's do the other leather next because I'll start to bring the model together a bit and then we'll do the, the metallic highlights after that, I think. For the main areas of leather we want to do them in more of a ready brown color and we're going to base them with a little bit of rhinox hide 
and we've basically got the airflow control box we've got these straps which come down through as well the belt and then we've also got quite a bit of detail on the back so we've got the the rucksack we've got lots of straps any additional bits that you may have attached on there as well so plenty to do but it should be fairly quick we're not if it, even if you haven't got a fully or oh, fully coveraged uh, coat of this Rhinox hide. That's okay because we're going to do a lot of highlighting anyway. So that'll just add to the worn look. So the first highlight on that ready leather is going to be with some Doomball Brown. I'm going to make sure we've got a good point on our brush because what will help us do this fairly quickly is just pulling it along the sides and catching some of that moulded and sculpted parts of the model and again don't worry if it's quite rough because it'll fit in with that kind of veteran trooper aesthetic that the Kree guys have got going on and again where you can catch the shape of the model so get that done then we'll come back and pop a final highlight on to highlight that, we're going to use some Scrag Brown, which you can see is a much brighter colour, so we want to get a good tip on the brush, not too much paint. And really focus on just drawing it along those lines and the shape of the model. Just to get that nice, thin highlight. If you want to, you can stipple it around to simulate uh, scratches. Nice and simple. So work your way around the model, get that done on all the leather. And then that's that bit done. So when we come back, we'll have a look at the strapping and the face masks. I want to base the strapping on the legs and the gas mask with some Rakarth flesh. So on the legs, it's fairly straightforward. You can just paint it in you get into all the recesses being careful around those parts you've already finished the gas mask you just need a little bit more patience working it in there this is a, a, a light color going over a dark color so you're going to need a couple of coats so just work it in gently take your time let it dry and then we'll come back after we put the second layer on and we'll give it a shade to shade all that kind of canvas we're going to use some Agrax earth shade now it's important not to flood the area too much just want to make sure we get enough to drop into those recesses and just tint the the wraps and the the face mask don't worry if you go over some of the silver parts because we'll tidy all that up when we get around to highlighting the silver so nice and easy get that done let it dry thoroughly and then we'll come back and uh, highlight it all up once that agrax earth shade is dry we want to go back to rakarth flesh make sure we've got a good point on the brush follow the shape of the mask around just leaving some in that shadow and then for the straps we just want to paint the majority of them leaving the Agrax earth shade in the recesses and then we'll come back in with another sharp highlight uh, just to help make everything pop once we've finished this part we're going to do a final sharp highlight just using some pallid witch flesh so again you don't want too much on your brush and we're just aiming for really thin line just accentuates the mask and then for the wraps just kind of highlight in very thinly towards the top like that so do that on everything and then we'll come back uh, and I think we'll have a look at the the kind of the gun casings uh, next oh no we'll do we'll do the uh, the wrap on the uh, on the backpack next for the 
I guess it's the bedroll along the back. Again, that's going to be another light colour. And the colour I'm going to use is Xandridest. So, just going to make sure I cover everything. Now, this is a little bit thick. So, just make sure it goes on quite controlled. Nice and easy like that. And, of course, it's going to need probably two coats, maybe three if you go even thinner than this. And then we'll come back and highlight it. I don't think we're going to need to, to shade it. We'll just highlight it. And we might just shade the absolute recesses to get some uh, definition. To highlight the back, uh, sorry, the bedroll, we're going to use your shabti bone. So there's a couple of things. First off, you've got a bit of a, a raised lip, which is really easy just to run a brush along. And then what we basically want to do is just paint the whole thing. Now, using a thin coat of a shabti bone, let it dry. Don't stay on it too long because what you'll find is you'll start to pull the paint um, and you, you'll basically tear the paint where it's drying and you'll get a really ugly effect. So just do that, let it dry, add that second coat on to, to cover it up and then uh, we'll have a look at the, the weapon casings and any black details next. Most of the black detail uh, is going to be things like the gloves and the weapon casings. Obviously, don't forget, where we've got the dark metal on the helmet and the shoulder pads, that's that's fine. So what we want to do is we want to just touch up any areas where we may have gone over with a summer bad and black. You can see I'm not using very much at all here. Any parts or any sort of decoration that there may be on the model kind of gloves etc uh, and the gas mask tubes so get them done cover up any issues that you may have caused with any mistakes and then we'll come back and highlight it all next to highlight the black we'll just use some mechanica standard gray one of the other things you can do with um with this part is if you wanted to kind of add some differentiation with the models you could maybe give somebody some black boots instead of brown boots using the same same kind of technique so I'm just popping this in and where I can I'm using the shape of the model don't forget the fingers on the gloves and of course on the on the back if there's any bits of detail as well get that done so get that done across all the bits of black and then when we come back, we'll, uh, I think we're getting it now. I think we're towards the end. I think we'll have a look at the, uh, getting the eyes done. And then we'll come back in and we'll do the metal. So let's just do the eyes before we do the metallic. So I've got some Corax white on the palette, which I've thinned down a little bit. Now get a really good point on your brush. When it comes to the eyes, what you're looking to do, just paint the lens with that Corax white. And the other thing to do as well, on the kind of control box here, we've got some buttons and a little arrow as well, which we'll paint. And if you've got the plasma pistol, then paint the, the plasma coil and the kind of the tip, the node of the power sword as well with that Corox white, just in preparation. So we'll do all those eyes next, uh, and then we'll do the metallics. Once that's dry, I'm going to use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of Blood Angels Red Contrast paint. Just drop it into the lens, and then that uh, the white underneath. Once it dries, it'll just give a little bit of a, a little bit of a glow on there. Just get that done. I'll show you how to do the power node and the uh, plasma coil next. For the plasma coil, just some ethermatic blue contrast paint. Just paint it over. Don't worry if you go over onto the the black parts. And the same for the power node on the sword. You can paint up the metal a little bit like that, just to get a bit of a bit of a blue glow. And then, if you want to get some glow on the sword, you can just paint some ethermatic blue along it like that. Easy peasy. So get that done, and then we'll highlight all the metallics next. Uh, one thing I've just missed off here as well with Blood Angels Red is the the controls on the box. Paint them with Blood Angels Red as well. Let's start highlighting the metallics then, as we're on the home stretch. So I'm going to start off with this iron hand steel that I've got on the palette. Now it's thickened up quite a bit and I'm okay with that because this is just going to be a, 
a rough kind of highlight and this is actually going to be the last highlight and what I'm looking to do so on the helmet and the shoulder blades where we've got that black contrast paint is I'm just looking so any kind of leading edges any sharp edges I'm just stippling some of this on if I can just rotate around there make sure that uh, still in focus and and then just kind of stippling along the edges of this armor obviously if you want to put decals on put the decals on before this uh, this stage and that just gives you the kind of rough chipped uh, kind of metallic black armor and it actually looks it looks quite nice and quite effective so to do that all over this model all over the other ones you're doing and we'll come back in with a brighter silver uh, to pick off some of the uh, some of the kind of bits on the weapons and and just enhance some of those scratches we want to add our final metallic highlight with some chrome from the model air there's a few things we're going to do with this firstly um on the helmets and anything that's going to be gold we want to just cover with the chrome we want to highlight any weapons so where we can catch an edge like that we will uh, and then obviously we've got the buttons which I've kind of already done because it would have been quite difficult for me to show that uh, on camera uh, so plenty to do just to get those final kind of metallic highlights on there like I said anything that's going to be gold any part of the weapons we can catch just like that work your way around if you want to put a couple of scratches in then you can do because it's kind of like a brighter metal than what's going to be on the underneath so get that done and then we'll come back uh, we'll do the gold and then I'll show you how to add a little bit of difference to some of your models. For the gold we're going to keep it nice and simple, just some Nasdreg yellow contrast paint over everything. Nice and simple like that. So we'll let that dry and then we'll come back in and we'll have a look at some of the other models and see how we can just add a little bit of variation to them. So one way you can quickly change the appearance of one of the guys is just take some snake bite leather contrast paint. You see I've done the other leg there and just paint that over those leg wraps to get some nice brown colored wraps, which uh, gives you a first bit of variation. The next way you can get some good differentiation is with the, the trouser color. So if I go back to this, Mechanica standard grey I can use this to paint the trousers again leaving the darkest part in the recesses uh, you know but if you think about it over time as a veteran squad they're going to be scavenging gear maybe they've been given gear at different points so it's bound to have kind of different colors to it so this is an example of, of grey pants so we'll base them with Mechanicus grey and we'll come back and highlight them next and to highlight that Mechanica standard grey, use a Ministratum grey, which it is quite a light grey. So like all the other highlights, we're, we're looking for those kind of sharp edges. If you wanted a more intermediate grey, you could go with something like Dawnstone, but just popping this on, on quite thinly, so let that dry and add another coat. So that's one way having grey pants instead. The next option is to go for a browner pair of pants. So I've got a little bit of Steel Legion drab here. I'm just going to paint this over all of the trousers. So you may need to go into the recesses with this one. because We probably will have to give it its own shade. Nice and easy. Get that done. Let it dry. Put another coat on if you need it. And then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. When that's drying, I'm happy with that. I'm then going to shade the legs um, with some Agrax Earth Shade. Make sure I've not got too much on my brush because it's more for the recesses I want this than to flood the model. So that works out quite nicely. So we'll let that dry again uh, and then we'll uh, we'll highlight it. Then we're going to go back in with the Steel Legion Drab just to pick out those kind of raised areas that we don't want to be 
too dark just like that so that's gives you a nice uh, rough idea now I want to highlight that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of that Vinistratum grey and I'm just gonna mix it in there to get that kind of khaki looking colour so dark khaki or medium khaki I suppose uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use that just to pick out some of these folds and, and creases just like that so nice and simple so we've got some grey pants some uh, brown pants and next up I'll show you how to do uh, we'll see about aging this jacket a bit thing to do is I want to show you how to scuff up this jacket so going back to that rough rust gray sorry like you said, I've started on this side and what we're going to do is get some on your brush and then brush your brush off onto some tissue paper and then for all those kind of highlighted areas which is going to go over them just dab in stippling on that rust gray because what this does it then kind of desaturates the blue a little bit and then just makes the kind of overall impression that the coat is a little bit older a little bit faded a little bit more worn a little bit more battered so nice and easy effect that you can do just to age up the clothing a little bit so that when you look at it it's a little bit more worn a little bit more battered it's probably been through a little bit more so there we are that's uh some different ways of, of making your troops look a little bit different. We'll have a look at them on the turntable next after I've based them a little bit. So there we have it. Those Death Core of Creek are done and they're ready for the tabletop. Whether it's for Kill Team or 40k, I think they look great. And I really hope you enjoyed the video and picked up lots of tips and tricks. If you did, please leave a like and a comment down below. It really does help me make sure that I'm producing the kind of things you want to see. And it also helps grow the channel as well. If you'd like to support the channel and you can do so, you can be like Tom and make suggestions via my Patreon where you get exclusive access to me via my Discord, a monthly live frequently asked question show on YouTube as well as the occasional giveaway and the occasional exclusive content. You can also use the link for Goblin Gaming which gives you up to 20% off all your wargaming needs. There's also my Amazon affiliate links with my recommended equipment. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time.